the Dr. Swan song was a long one. He essentially did everything he wanted to do. He saved all of his companions, and you could tell in their eyes, every single one of them, save for Rose, because she didn't know him at the time, knew that it was time. They knew he was going to regenerate again, because all of them had had experience with him doing so, and they could tell. I especially love Elizabeth Sladen's look. Anytime she does the crying look, it's always the best one, in my opinion, because it's about to cry, and you can tell it, but keeps it back to hold her integrity. That's very Sarah Jane, of course, and it's just my favorite look. Um, <clears throat> so he does everything. Builds himself back up to be the doctor, like he always is. Goes around the console, sees himself about to regenerate. And then, just as he starts glowing, they make the one thing that I didn't like. I don't want to go. He finally had himself built up back to be the doctor, and then they blew it. I don't want to go. Which, yes, I understand that that reflected the Tenth Doctor, but I didn't want it to reflect the Tenth Doctor. People are going to remember his swan song as the swan song of a broken Time Lord. The Ninth Doctor's swan song, the new man being born. But the Tenth Doctor's was a broken man that died in agony. And you could tell the stress that he went through because it blew up the TARDIS. <laughs> the symbiotic link between the TARDIS can be so large sometimes that stress like that can put both through extreme measures. And that's what happened to the TARDIS, which is actually a clever way of saying Russell T. Davis decided to break all of his toys before he left. So in other words, break the TARDIS, break the console room, break everything, that way Stephen Moffat can start with a completely new slate. But that does confirm that there's going to be a new interior to the TARDIS as well. Because we already knew about the exterior. If you're on the internet for even a slight glimpse of time involving Doctor Who, you know that there's going to be a new exterior because you already saw on location spots for it. <coughs> but... <coughs> The interior was always a rumor, and it finally got confirmed. <clears throat> but, my worries is that with the new techno look of the logo and everything, I'm afraid that they may be wanting to make the TARDIS look more techno inside. And if they do, that's a huge mistake. Because the TARDIS always has looked different somehow. It's this unexplainable different. It looks more like a room than a ship. And that's intentional. And if they make it look like something off of Star Trek, I'm going to be disappointed. But I don't think they would. Stephen Moffat seems to be the type that wouldn't do something like that. I hope that the new console room has the same verve that the classic ones have. Kind of how the outside of the TARDIS is based on the classic TARDIS now, but still has that modern feel to it. I hope they do the same with the inside. Now, as for regeneration, the Tenth Doctor's was the toughest regeneration I've ever seen, but I got through it, because I've already gone through that with my first Doctor, the Ninth Doctor. He was my first one. It was a shock. Whenever David Tennant came around, I went, who is this guy? The thing is, David Tennant brought a lot of people to the series, including my wife. She gave me quite an interesting look at myself when it came to regeneration. How I, whenever I saw the regeneration, immediately went, ooh, new doctor. I'm curious. And I think I'll like Matt Smith, just from the little bit I've seen. And if you look close enough on the internet, you'll find the trailer if you're in America, to the the 11th Doctor's reign. You would get a small teaser trailer where it 
just shows him, including the sonic screwdriver blowing up in his hand, which makes me worry they may redesign that, too. I'm hoping maybe they've just destroyed it as a plot device, sort of like when they did around the fifth Doctor's reign, where he had to be more creative because the sonic screwdriver was getting him out of way too many spots. So he had to go to the, as the tenth Doctor put it, using some a kettle and some string to save the universe instead of using the sonic screwdriver all the time. Um, but... The regeneration was tough on her. It made me really look back and think how I felt when the first of my doctors regenerated. It was a moment of fear, not knowing what this new guy was going to bring to it, thinking he can't possibly be as good as Christopher Eccleston was, and yet as soon as he got started, my mind changed. I liked him. And I've got a feeling that this is going to be what is going to happen to Matt Smith, given people give him the chance. Everyone that originally came in with their first Doctor being number 10 has their doubts. I've seen different reactions from different people, from my wife bawling her eyes up, tearing a box of tissues apart, to one of my other friends, even though Tin was her first doctor, and she's a bit wary of it, she's still accepting it and moving on. It depends on a person how they're going to react, but no matter how they react, your first regeneration is always going to be tough in some way or form. And it makes us Who fans that have already gone through regeneration, whether you went through it in the classic series, or you went through it like I did with my first Doctor Me number nine, it really makes you think about being a bit sensitive to the new fans because I went through this slight moment where I'm feeling ashamed of myself. I was like, well, he's, he's back alive. He's fine, and you, you'll like this guy, trust me. Then realizing that, wait, this is her first regeneration. She's going through what I went through. That's why when it comes to making fun of fangirls, as we like to call them, we've got to be careful. If you make fun of a person that's in that state too much, then they will become bitter and not want to watch Doctor Who. And as Chip put it, because Chip from the Two Minute Time Lord considers the Tenth Doctor to be his Doctor, even though he liked the classic series, he doesn't want to go either, is how he put it. And if, and I don't want them to go, any of the fans either. But if you continuously push them, then they will have no choice but to go. But that's my review. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash labtech7. And, of course, my blog is samuellewis.blogspot.com. And to all ten fans, my deepest sympathies, just give Matt Smith a chance. Bye.